Dear friends, uh, I would like to welcome you very warmly for this our meeting. Uh, the next meeting which uh, we organize all together with, with our colleagues from different uh, part of this world. Uh, and today uh, our symbolic microphone will go again to, uh, to Bulgaria, uh, to Tania uh, Kancheva, uh, and uh, we'll be just uh, lucky to hear some Bulgarian experience and some knowledge about uh, all dynamic of mental processes of kids uh, who have this experience as a refugees, as a immigrants, uh, and are in this uh, war condition. Tanya, I'm warmly really welcome you here, and I'm really very happy that uh, that you agreed to to share with the, this your knowledge. Uh, for all of you who see Tanya first time. I'm not sure if there is anybody like it, but if if it is, uh, Tanya uh, Kancheva, she is a, a trainer, basic trainer from Bulgaria. Uh, and, and Tanya, I give you the symbolic microphone. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if you hear me well. Yes, we hear you very well. Good evening, uh, dear friends and colleagues. I'm very happy to be here uh, together with you in those difficult times for everybody of us. And uh, I would like with pleasure to share my experience. Uh, dear friends, as Eva told you, I'm Tatiana Kancheva and uh, I'm a basic trainer in the Bulgarian Association of Positive Psychotherapy. Um, in meantime, I have a specialization in uh, a child positive psychotherapy. Um, so I work uh, um, very often with uh, kids. Now I work with children of um, refugees or immigrants. And I would like to share with you my uh, experience. My tema is characteristics and features of mental processes in children of refugees, immigrants who survived the trauma of the, of the war. Uh, the tema is uh, very heavy and it was not uh, easy uh, to make a compilation of everything what is needed to be uh, safe. But I try to make uh, um, a presentation of the most important things. Dear friends, um, here I would like to share something with you. And this is a thought which I like a lot. Okay. Uh, one thought of Antoine de Saint Exupéry, uh, who, who has written that. Adults never understand anything on their own, and it's tiring for children to explain things to them forever and ever. This is very, very important, dear friends, when we work with traumatized child children. It is necessity to understand what they are telling to us with their behavior, with their emotions. So uh, in order to understand children, it is necessary to know some pattern, patterns and peculiarities in their development and how they relate to what is happening around them. Uh, it is very important to know in our work that the behavior of a person who has been traumatized or living in stress regresses in, wider, in one direction and seeks compensation or escape in another one. So I try to work following this thought of uh, Antoine de uh, Saint Exupéry. Um, adults never understand anything on their own, and it's tiring for children to explain things to them forever and ever. Uh, in my work, I always try to understand what the child 
is with its behavior or with its emotion, with its words. Um, in order to understand children, it is necessary to know some patterns and peculiarities in their development and how they relate to what is happening around them. When a person has been traumatized or living in stress, the person regresses in one direction or seeks compensation or escape in another. Regarding children, the regression in behavior or seeking compensation is due to the fact that they are accumulated several psychological crises or or other life events, leaving home, separation, loss with a loved one, parent, and others. Here, the age of the child is especially important, which determines the presence of social, psychological, and psychosocial experience and the possible coincidence with an age crisis. Dear colleagues, it is very important to know whether the child has, it, uh, finds under the circumstances of psychological or age crisis. In some cases, it is possible the, they the coincidence with each other. The child to find itself in psychological and in age crisis. What we can do? The significant adult, parent, caregiver, or person working with the child needs to accompany the child on the way out of the accumulating crisis in its life at the moment. When the child is in, in crisis, the child doesn't know what to do. The child feels powerless, hopelessly. The child fights with anxiety, loneliness, fear, despair, sadness, anger, horror, panic. I'm sorry. Let's make some determination between psychological crisis and age crisis. Psych psychological crisis occurs when unexpected life circumstances event place the child in deprivation. Deprivation, it is fact or process of lack or denial of something considered to be a necessity to meet human needs. For example, loss of a parent or parents due to illness, death, relocation, physical or mental abuse of the child, inadequate education model. Age crisis, it means psychological struggle between the accumulated emo emotional and respectively the accumulated cognitive experience of the child. The sudden biological and psychological change requires mental maturity, which is not available at the moment. The child resents aggressive or depressive or depressed spectrum of emotions and with his behavior provokes con conflicts with adults, a child's appeal for help. As we know, a crisis, it means two things, possibility and problem in the same time. The possibility, it means that during the crisis, we can miss qualitative transformations in the human psyche, which can lead us to a psychological de development. This development will lead us way away out from the crisis. When we, we face the problem, dear colleagues, 
we fall into a psychological conflict. This psychological conflict can be between the change, the change it needs and available opportunities, or between the new needs and the previously established relationships. Every psychological conflict has a psychological task to deal with. When we find this, when we dissolve, uh, solve this psychological task, we can find our way out of the crisis. The way out of the crisis, colleagues, it means to find our way for adaptation. What is happening around the child causes dynamic changes in his mental development. His vital forces are being tested to adapt to the world around him, as well as to improve the process of, of adapting the world to himself. So there are two ways very important to have a successful adaptation. We or the child to adapt to the world and to adapt the world to the child. Understanding the child experiences will help us facilitate his adaptation. The adaptation, it means the, re the replacement of the old, the familiar, the sure, with the new one. The new is unknown for the child and it makes him unsecure. So let's see what is inside the psychology, the psycho, uh, psychology of the traumatized child. In his emotional state, we can find dissatisfaction, fear, lie, shame, shyness, anger, hostility, insult, grief, and sadness. In child's behavior, we can find impulsivity, disobedience, destructive behavior, cruelty, neglect. When working with children of refugees or immigrants, it is necessary to take into account the child's experience, which are determined by the age of the child, the gender of the child, the nationality with its specifics, peculiarities of the family environment, the presence of brothers, sisters, grandparents, and others. We should take into account also the religion of the child, the type of settlement they come from, and the, spe the specific of it, the emotional intelligence, the cognitive abilities, and the social competence. The mental processes in children depend on their mental growth. A determining factor for it, for which is their neurophysical maturation. Child psychology distinguishes several qualitatively significant age periods from which we will consider preschool age, three to six years, early school age, six to 10 years, middle school age, 11 to 14 years, and adolescence, 14 to 18 years. In my presentation, dear colleagues, I will tell you a few words for every of this age range. Let's start first with the preschool age, three to six years. From the age of three, children are committed to connecting with the outside world. The child begins to be more active in contact with the reality. Where possible, it would be involved and help the elderly. Let's have into mind that the child's limited cognitive abilities help him to quickly accumulate 
physical and mental strength to cope with the trauma. The game as the most significant activity and the warm contact with the trusted pers uh, a person help to redirect the forces in the direction of adaptation. The specialist must give a psychological support to the child to make, to make age specific contact by complementing the mother's behavior. Emotions are accepted as a necessity and are given the right to exist and the, in the certain situation without verbal comment. Dear colleagues, this is very important. When we meet a traumatized child, we to give the right to all the emotions without a verbal comment. In case needed, the adult defends the necessary position, but with patience, without imposing it authoritarian or aggressive. Uh, it's not needed to push the child in the needed behavior or the requested behavior. We should show a lot of patience and understanding. The child should be prepared for any forthcoming changes with real understandable examples. At the same time, we try to strengthen his responsibility and empathy. If necessary, instead, instead of suppressing, we can give the right to share the unpleasant experience with each other. It is very important for us to help the child, the child to avoid, to suppress its feelings. This is very, very important, dear colleagues. The child has the right to ask, to receive answers, to share his experiences. At this age, children are already talking about justice and are able to give assessments of other people's behavior. We should remember, under fear or stress, the child forgets social norms. Behavior is predominantly impulsive. In this age range, appear the first social feelings. Dear colleague, the child can understand what is hate, love, affection, fear, duty, responsibility to someone. If the child experiences very dramatic and lasting events, it fails to restore his mental balance and tries to externally deal with the conflict. Then we have physical symptoms as hyperactivity, ticks, nails biting, refusal of activities, or refusal of contact. The child who has experienced trauma when accumulating negative experiences makes exaggerated reactions of dissatisfaction or fear and thus blocks the power of the reached mind. In this case, a transitional object as toy, blanket or something others can minimize stress and negative emotions. A specific point is the global identifications with a parent. If the father is absent, this would affect the boys in the in identification with him. If the father remained in the country they come from, the child could glorify him and this will influence his behavior. For girls, the absence of the father 
would affect not only the child's integration into the new social environment, but also its future development. For us, it is important to be familiar with certain specifics of the nationality by origin and the religion of the parents. This would facilitate also important are some certain features of the family environment, the presence of brothers, sisters, and others, as well the type of the settlement from which they come. This will largely explain the differences in the social psychological experience of the child. Now we can move to the second stage or period, early school age, six to 10 years. In this age range, the child is able, according to his intellect and social knowledge, to make more accurate causal connection about its experience. Here again, the emotion is leading. The child in this age does not engage his cognitive processes with the future and the different possibilities, but only with the current situation. It does not actively experience the fear of war. Most often, the fear in those children is a suggested fear brought on by the emotional dominance of adults, mostly the parents. At this age, children are easily susceptible to other people's suggestions, accidentally heard comments and assessments from those around, around them can lead the child to fearful or depressive processing of the trauma. This age is characterized by impulsive, impulsiveness, unrestrained emotional outbursts, and behavioral reaction. The child has insufficient social maturity, does not recognize social dangers. We need to emphasize on the rules of self-preservation in communication with others. Psychological problem of this age is the narcissistic feelings of the child. The child needs to know his place in the peer group thanks to the presence of certain abilities. The child begins to form his, his personal conscious adaptation strategies, like lying, secondary psychological benefit, playing different roles in different situations. It is very, very important, dear colleagues, to pay attention to the manners or different self-preservation possibilities. Educators must accompany the child psychological struggle, verbalize aggressive feelings, and give examples of patterns of behavior. In the previous uh, age uh, uh, stage, the verbalization is it was not needed, but here, dear colleague, the child is enough big to understand. So we need to verbalize the situation and the emotions. We need to encourage children to deal with problem situation on their own without conflict, actively remind and defend, and defend the observance of the norms for social coexistence. Students should be involved in extracurricular activities and sport. The traumatized child needs more fun and communication with other children. It would be good for other children to be aware with the child's story, 
but following the rule, the truth, but not the whole truth. It is important that the child is not presented as the victim or a child who has something wrong. We should highlight the strength of his own nationality and help the child to adapt more quickly to the new environment. It is extremely important to follow the pace of socializing of the child and not to rush, to avoid confrontation or pressure. If we rush, dear colleagues, in this uh, um, socialization, we can uh, make some pressure on the child. Often, children who have experienced trauma express heavier their dissatisfaction or depression. Boys react more sensitively to new contacts. If the father is missing, this, this would complicate social relationships. Then it is possible for boys to perceive themselves as men in the new environment and this to influence the learning process or activity. Girls, on the other hand, by identifying with the image of the mother, could overexpose some of her features, and this will lead to difficulties in future development and adaptation. Children in this age group will literally stand up for the guidance given by their parents. Middle school age, 11 to 14 years, it is the beginning of the identity crisis. Psychological changes in puberty occur in this age range. The changes provoke unexpected desires, but also anxiety and uncertainty. A stage of self-closure, separation by sex, and separation into small groups of like-minded people begins. The assessment and evaluation of each person begins, initially mainly in the negative spectrum. So if we meet a child, a child in this age range, we need to know that this child may close itself because his age it is very special at this moment and it has its own problematic. We have development of socio-political thinking, ideals and aspirations. In this age range, boys and girls are in a situation on the one hand to cope with their sexual maturation and on the other hand to build character, to form habits for individual and social behavior, to form their uniqueness in games, learning and work for the benefit of the society or family. In this period, we face a weak will. It is difficult to be conscious. For this reason, behavior is often unexpected, hasty, and meaningless. Moral evaluations of ours or others' feelings is in most cases a stronger motive for, re for reacting than being aware of the consequences of our own actions. We still have weak self-control, independence. Here shame is possible as a social feeling associated with self-esteem. At this age, shame is associated 
with the fear of exposing the child and worrying about how much others will like it. The emergence of an, infer an inferiority complex is possible. Experiences of insufficient significance of person's manifest manifestations, achievements, and manner of communications. And now we are coming to the most difficult ages, and this is the adolescence, 14 to 18, year, 18 years old. A real crisis of identity. This is a period of differentiation of the main char characteristics of the future personality. In a biological sense, stabili stabilization of, of sexual affiliation and the role begins. In the psych psychological aspect, building personal will, character, communication skills, sense of love, and worldview. The redirection of interest from the outside world to the problem of the body creates emotional chaos in adolescence. He is increasingly confronted with the ongoing bodily changes with the biological need for the release of sexual energy. This makes the young people easily agitated, insecure, sometimes frightened and dissatisfied with themselves and the world around them. The psychological horizon of the adolescent is very narrow. It is important here and now. Do not, they do not think about the consequences. This can lead to life-threatening situation. The will for freedom and independence from parents is growing. The parental model is being abandoned and the need for contact with peers is growing. The teenagers destroys the old. The impermissible is tested. Foreign qualities and established social orders are criticized. Striking out the importance of parents, family values is going ahead. The traumatized adolescent is blocked in his need to be among his peers. For this reason, he accumulates a lot of negative emotions about the situation and the residence in another country. As his psychological protection, the teenager encapsulates himself. He becomes easily irritable, does not allow close relations, does not recognize authorities. At certain times, he opposes the advice and orders of important adults or the law. The young person often downplays the situation. Cautiously or unconsciously opposes its adaptation. Abrupt change, changes of aggressive to auto-aggressive tendencies or behavior are possible. Dealing with such destructive behavior requires empathic acceptance of the emotional state and at the same time firm adherence to the norms. Dear colleague, when we work with traumatized children, it is very important to keep in our mind the Kapman Triangle. 
the violence experienced determines the way the child lives and connects with the world. Children's conscien uh, consciousness uses a variety of mechanisms to protect themselves from violence, to cope, to survive, and somehow move forward. One of those protective mechanisms to deal with violence is identification with the aggressor, abuser. The child can be identified literally to want to be an abuser, so as not to be a victim. But the child can also idealize persecutor's power and authority. The child can want to be under the wing of his power, to understand violence, to endure pain and to humiliate, to want to be forced, just to be sure that it will survive, that it will have shelter, that it will be protected from the unknown, foreign world, that no one else will, will be threatened by the abuser, that the family will survive. survive. This we know as the Stockholm Syndrome. What can help dear colleagues to us when working with traumatized children? This is the principle of hope. An important rule when working with children and adolescents is to implement the principle of hope. Emotional processing becomes appropriate only when it is built on things heard and shown by children and adolescents and illustrated with fact. In pre-adolescence and puberty, children know how to work with their experiences. They need to share them, but they don't need someone else's comment. The children need a tolerant listening and empathic reception of their experiential content. The principle of hope manifests itself by introducing many examples of similar experiences with other children, but up to 12, 13 years, in order to activate their own physical and mental trauma coping forces. This we know as the transcultural approach of positive psychotherapy. At this age, children are emotionally and cognitively intelligent enough. This allows them to very accurately differentiate adult behavior in terms of sincerity and truthfulness. Until puberty, children do not have the psychological ability to make self-observations and self-analysis. For this reason, they are unable to share their mental illnesses they may, may not have a vision of the causal relationship of the symptoms to the experiences that cause it. It would be inappropriate for the adult to ask direct questions, asking for an explanation as to the reason for the appearance. Empathic behavior verbalization and empowerment of the child's probable feelings are needed. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for your attention. Благодаря ви.
за вашето внимание. If you have any questions, I'm here and I will try to answer them. Thank you, dear colleagues. Yeah, so um, my question uh, mostly, so thank you very much for this amazing presentation. This is the question from uh, Svetlana Kika, and uh, it concerns um, mostly the children and the families who have already been evacuated and who are already abroad. And uh, the question would be, uh the following there are some families who uh, are hosted uh, or manage to rent their flats and have their own households but there are also families who are you know hosted by locals or who live in some refugee centers um and in this case it causes some troubles in terms of um their uh habits uh, for example, a child may be waking up in the night and would want to go pee, and but you need to kind of adapt because you don't want to um, wake up your hosts. So, I mean, I even wonder how it is possible that at this stage we still have such questions and such problems, but these are the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I understand uh, this uh, situation. Um, in this, uh, if we find ourselves in such a situation, uh, we first should take care about the basic needs. Um, uh, you know the Maslow pyramid. Mm -hmm. So if uh, um, we didn't meet uh, uh, the children's basic needs, it will very difficult for us to take care about his uh, psychological emotions. Uh, for this reason, it is uh, first very important to work with the um, parents, to speak with them, and to arrange uh, some, uh, um, uh, how to tell it in English, to make uh, some uh, agreements uh, about uh, the needs of the child. I don't know if you understand me. Actually, to make some agreement with, with the hosts when it is appropriate during the night, during the day, or find some other solutions to be able to meet the basic needs of the child. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what the question was, uh, how we can help in this situation is to make an agreement very clear agreement between the immigrants and the hosts. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will be a big humiliation to don't have the right, the people to take care about their basic needs when they need it. Mm -hmm. We cannot uh, uh, say to the child, you can pee only between one and two o'clock a.m. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, uh, dear friends, uh, um, when we have uh, small children, uh, it is the most important thing to uh, speak and work uh, with the, with their parents. Mm -hmm. As bigger the child, as more working with the child, as smaller the child, as more working with the parents. Dear friends, if you have uh, other questions, you can always contact me. Uh, you can write me in Messenger, in, uh, you can find me in Facebook. Uh, in Facebook, I am Tatiana Kirilova. Um, and I will be always uh, answering to you and try to help you with my own experience. Любитруйте дуже дякую вам за те, що прийшли на сьогоднішній семінар. Якщо у вас будуть якісь додаткові питання, ви можете завжди контактувати зі мною особисто, ставити мені їх особисто. Можете зв'язатися зі мною в Фейсбуці. В Фейсбуці мене звати Тетяна Керилова. І, та, і дякую вам дуже за те, що ви приділили час під час нашої сьогоднішньої конференції. Дорогі приятелі, дуже сердечно дякую вам за цей час. 
Jeżeli będziecie mieli jakieś pytania, zawsze możecie do mnie napisać. Możecie też mi znaleźć na Facebooku. Na Facebooku nazywam się Tatiana Kirlowo. Dziękuję bardzo serdecznie Wam za ten czas i do zobaczenia. Przy wszystkich pytaniach możecie dopytać Tatiana na Facebook. Tam jest Tatiana Kirlowa i będę się radowała, po prostu, wszystko do odpowiedzi na Wasze pytania.